I really enjoy street photography in small cities and towns as it forces you to really observe and be creative and experiment. So in today's video I'm in the small city of Gloucester near where I live to go out exploring and see what I can come up with. The weather was very hit and miss on the day and there was this huge storm rolling in but for the time being it's sunny and I wanted to make the most of that good weather. So I noticed this reflection in the window, there's a menu and there's a guy sitting on a bench behind me and I think the two could come together to make quite a nice uh, sort of practice shot, a nice reflection shot to get my eye in and get the ball rolling and get my confidence up for the photo walk ahead. Firstly I just check to make sure there's no one sitting on the other side of the window which can sometimes be quite awkward when they might think you're taking a photo of them but actually you're using the reflection so that's always a good thing to bear in mind. Um, I line it up so that the guy is in the middle of all the writing and it's not the best shot in the world but again I've, I've mentioned before on previous point of view videos I always like getting a nice practice shot in to start with just to sort of get into the flow for the photo walk going forward. I think one of the hardest things about street photography, especially if you're a beginner, when you first start out, and even if you've been taking street photography for a while, is confidence and kind of the chance of there being a confrontation with someone. Now, here I'm shooting in quite a residential area and I get told off by the security guard and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It was actually quite a chill conversation, it's fair enough. And he just let me know where I'm not allowed to take photography on private land. And I said, cool, no worries, and I walked on. But I think it's quite important just to point out that how rare this is. And this is probably the first sort of negative confrontation I've had with someone in over a year. So yeah, if you're getting into street photography, really something not to worry about. But I will do a video about this later on in the future. So back to the photography. And I really like this scene. I really love using reflections to create abstraction in my street photography. And I think it can be really powerful to create layers and depth and visual interests. And for me, this can often be a lot more interesting than taking a photo that's a bit more figurative. So here I'm just trying to use the writing that's on the window, as well as the light and the people walking past to create framing, texture, and still trying to get the right human element to anchor the shot. You'll find that I use reflections quite a lot in this video, and that's because I'm in a small place with not really a lot going on, not a lot of foot traffic. And I think that you've just got to shoot to the conditions, so use your environment to your advantage and be as creative as you can with it to make some interesting photos. So I've only moved on to the next shop window here with this uh, closed gate in front of, creating nice shadows and reflections and texture. And it's just a case of waiting for the right people to interact with the scene or walk past and crank something from nothing really because it's quite a boring scene but I think just trying to be a bit creative with it can end up making some really nice photos. Recently I've been starting to get more interested in wider angle street photography, which generally requires you to get closer to subjects, um, but it also gives you the option to include more in the frame. So not necessarily the best place for this kind of photography um, in this city, because it's quite small, not much going on like I mentioned already. But this scene I thought made quite a cool shot. Um, again, including a bit more people in the scene, kind of uh, trying something new which I'm not particularly good at. A lot of my street photography focuses on the single human element or details or abstraction, reflection, things like that. And yeah, I really want to start experimenting more and changing my style, I suppose. And I think that's really important as a photographer to always keep looking at new ways you can improve or new, thing, new things you can incorporate into your, um, into your work, which I think will only benefit your work in the long run if you're open to change and experimentation. Another nice reflection here and a nice piece of writing on the window. So I'm always keeping my eye open for interesting writing and details that I can use for the basis of a composition to add in the graphical element, to create a bit of 
depth and also sometimes mood and mystery and really make the viewer figure out what's going on and what they're really looking at. Another cool thing about reflections is that when people walk past, often they wonder what the hell you're doing and they will look into the reflection so you can kind of get eye contact or get someone looking in, in the frame, which can be quite powerful. So that happens in this shot. It's definitely not my favorite reflection shot of the day, but I do think there's something to it. And I think if it was a bit busier and more people walking past, I might've been able to figure out a better composition, maybe with a bit better lighting later on in the day, but it's still quite a cool reflection shot with that uh, connection from the subject looking into the lens of the camera. On a street photography walk, I find it's always really important to be looking all the time and also to have your camera ready to go at any second because you never really know what's going to pop up. You might be able to go slow and look at a reflection and just take your time, but other times you might just come across a scene that suddenly happens and you want to just capture it. So yeah, it's really important to have your gear ready to go and understand how to use your gear. So in this case, I see this guy uh, looking out at a billboard and he looks kind of cool. He's got sunglasses on. There's this nice orange background. And there's something about the shot that is nothing necessarily special, but I really, really like it. I think the first shot I get here is just a practice one. It's in black and white, and I think the composition's okay. But I want to just move around, get a bit closer, and capture his expression, because I think that's what's the interesting thing about this shot. So yeah, I um, just moved around, got my camera ready, popped it up and snapped off the shot. And I think it's really cool. I think it's just a little bit different. Um, and yeah, the colors, composition, and the expression on this guy's face looking out into the distance is quite cool. I always have my camera on a wrist strap to keep it safe. I'm dropping it or someone nicking it, but um, it also means I always have it at the ready uh, to take shots that just come up. For example, as well in this uh, location here, I like what the guy's pose that he was in with his hand on the sort of post, uh, smoking a cigarette. And I think it makes for quite uh, a weird shot. Kind of want to figure out what's going on in the first one. And it's just, yeah, a spur of the moment shot. So um, I have two ways of shooting. One is kind of finding a scene, exploring it, developing it. And the other one is just shooting on the fly and just seeing what comes up um, around the corner. So in this location here, I love this window. I really, really, really enjoy the graphic, text and the writing and um, it's just a case of finding the right subject for it. So when I'm doing reflection shots sometimes I'm trying to capture someone or something reflected in a window and other times I want to shoot through the window. So in this instance I shoot through the window and I see this guy across the street wearing a light coloured top which contrasts really nicely with the background and that coupled with the writing on the window makes for a really really nice composition and I think that's probably one off if not my favourite shot of the day. And it's not just people I'm looking out for on the street as well. Like I quite enjoy capturing abstract shots. Definitely not for everyone. I know lots of people don't really like abstract art, but for me, looking for little details and textures on the street that make nice little abstract images is something that I'm always attracted to and always looking out for. So yeah, this shot here, really like the texture of the broken wood and the color and the way the shapes sort of move together. Um, and it's just a nice little abstract shot to show a little bit of the texture of the place that I'm shooting in. It's amazing when you start actively looking for reflections to make great street photos from. How many that you notice, how many reflections that you notice around. So the possibilities really are quite endless when you're um, in a town or a city or a big city because there's reflections everywhere. So you can just practice and try out different ideas and then sometimes you end up getting a bit lucky with the right subject or the right texture and you come away with a great shot. So I didn't really get anything amazing in this little location here, but it was fun to sort of play around and experiment with um, different compositions that might make quite an interesting shot. 
And if you have the time, I've banged on about this before, but working the scene is so important because you might take one shot and then move on somewhere else. But if you spend a little bit of time, if you have the time in, in that area and you feel like there's a shot to be had there, then it's always worth doing that if you can because you might never be in that location again with those conditions again and you, you want to make the most of it. So a lot of the time for me when it comes to reflections, it's instinctual as to whether I think there could be a good shot there. I'll try out a few ideas, wait around for a little while, but if nothing's happening, I'll move on. In this case, I've got a couple of cool shots that I'm, I'm quite happy with. Another thing that I always look out for on the street is something that I can use for an interesting foreground to really bring in an extra element, an extra dimension, a bit of depth to the photograph. So here I like the colours, the yellow across the street, but I like how it's reflected in the front of this car bonnet. So I'm waiting for someone to walk past to bring the shot together. Creative framing and subframing is another tool that I like to use in my street photography a lot. The more creative and the more different, the better. And so for this scene here, I'm using a bench um, simply just to frame up an interesting character that is sitting across the street um, in a cafe. For me, the framing really adds to the image and it directs your eye, creates a bit more abstraction, visual interest. And yeah, I think it's quite a striking shot. At this point, the thunderstorm came over and just it just absolutely chucked it down with rain. So I just stopped where I was, um, just trying to stay dry under this tree, but then I noticed this bit of graffiti on this uh, thing in front of me. And I think sometimes with street photography, you just need to get lucky. Of course though, you do make your own luck, so you have to be out with your camera as much as possible to give yourself the best chance of coming away with great shots or being in the right place at the right time. So here, the graffiti said, just another rainy day with someone holding an umbrella. So all I was really waiting for was, was the right person to walk past um, in the rain with an umbrella to really pull the shot together. And yeah, it was just one of those shots that just came out of nowhere, but I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. While I was walking through a shopping centre, going from one street to another, I walked straight past this shuttered shop and only saw out of the corner of my eye that there were some interesting reflections in this window as well as there were sort of litter box type shapes. So I thought there could be a really good shot here. It was just a case of being really patient and waiting for the right people or person to walk through to bring the shot all together. I really enjoy the human element in a lot of my street photographs, as well as using colour. So here, one of the things that attracted me most was this pop of red and um, I was trying to make sure I framed up the pop of red in the top part of the composition, just then waiting for the right person to walk through. If you do have any questions at all, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. I do love talking all things street photography, so I'd be happy to chat to you all about my processes or any other questions you might have. Um, so yeah, just drop them in the comments. Also, if you're enjoying the video, please go ahead and give it a like because it really helps it to spread to other people to enjoy um, as well.
So as I'm winding down here, getting ready to go back to my car and, and go home, I noticed the wet pavement was giving some nice reflections and there's also some flags um, across the street. So I just got one last shot in the bag, a little bit of an abstract one, um, and I really like it. I think it's, again, showing the nice bit of texture of the city, a nice little story, and it was a great end to the day of successful street photography. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. And if you're enjoying this uh, video, I'll pop up another street photography point of view video walk uh, now as well. If you like the content, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.